So there's the bass, but I don't want it there. I want it to come after the drums because I'll be mixing the drums first. So let's have a quick check. Kick, 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 snare, snare. Hi-hat, overheads, toms. Actually, I like the overheads coming after the toms because I consider the toms as drums and a different kind of thing to crashes and cymbals. So now we're going to colour things uh, so it doesn't look so bland and also it's very easy to see groups of things uh, by colour. Much easier when you're mixing to go straight to something. So I'm going to go ahead and colour some of these things and uh, there's no rule to this. You just uh, put the colours that you want to put. I just tend to group things together in similar colours that are similar sounds. Ah, okay, so look at these three guitars here. They're all the same part. In other words, the person played at one go. They're not overdubs or double tracking or anything. So I'm going to colour them the same so that I remember that it's all just one part. But obviously three different mic positions. That way, when I go through the mix and uh, come back to these, it will just remind me that they're actually the same part and not to process them too differently. And you can see the engineer here has labelled them differently. There's neck, there's body, and a ridge, I'm assuming, means original. I'm not sure what orridge means. It probably means original, but um, I'll soon find out once I solo the track and have a listen to it. But at least they've been labelled for us, which is great. So I'm just going to continue colouring these like I do. And here's another pair of things that obviously are the same thing with just different mic positions. So let's put them as the same colour. And I know I've coloured them the same as some drums, but they're obviously not drums and they're quite far down the page, so I don't think I'm going to get confused. Here's a stereo track of some keyboards, Hammond, an electric piano. And right now I'm going to leave all the vocals just grey, just uncoloured for the moment, because I'm going to mix the track first. So now I'm going to pull all the volumes down and I'm going to do it old school one by one. You can select all and pull them all down, but um, I'm so used to opening mixes where there's bus sends and there's all sorts of stuff um, that I don't want to adjust the volume on and things like that. So I just do it this way for safety. Uh, it's not like there's 150 tracks, there's only a few here. Well, we're almost there now. The last thing I do is I just uh, clean up the WAV files um, so I can see where everything's coming in by editing where there's no sound at all. I never insert silence because it can't be undone. And normally I'd take uh, a little bit more time over this and zoom in and actually solo the track and listen to it and make sure there's no noise there and just cut right up to the uh, beginning of the WAV. I do this because usually uh, when there's guitar parts, the engineer will punch in about a bar before the guitar starts playing and you can hear all the amp noise and stuff. So. Um, there's a lot of mess. In case you don't know, insert silence is when you double click on a WAV and um, actually edit the sample from the hard drive itself and erase what's on the wave, which I think is silly because you can't undo it. And uh, we've got huge hard drives these days, so I don't see the point in uh, doing that at all. And because we don't insert silence, it means if we want to put a bit of amp noise in to make it a bit real, we can just uh, put it back without uh, any trouble at all. So there we are, that's uh, all prepared now and ready to start the next step. So before the next step, save as. <laughs> 